This is Twit. I want to jump right into space stations here. Um, I mean, your core business, at least from what we see looking outside the company in, is private space stations. And just to kind of give us a, a, a grounding here, could you talk a little bit about, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but the difference between what you're doing versus something like the ISS or Mir or Skylab, and specifically, you know, how a private company operates in this setting? So, you know, if you look at the, um, you know, vast, we, we decided that, you know, we want to create a world where, you know, there are more humans living in space uh, than, than they are living on Earth. And obviously, if you go to space right now and uh, you uh, stay, you know, you start as a professional astronaut athlete on day one, you exercise two hours a day for six months to a year. Uh, when you'll come back, you'll you'll be a you know a physical wreck in terms of bone loss, muscle loss, some vision problem, and other medical issue. Um, and so you know to create that future where people live in space, we obviously need to go to Mars and the Moon and, and other planets. Um, but we also need you know space habitat in space that are that are that are livable for more than six months to a year, and that are livable for anyone. And and that's where artificial um, gravity f- come from. And so if you look at that, that's all. That's a long-term roadmap, right? 20 years, 15, probably more than 15, 30 years, and that's our, you know, guiding star. Um, and then, you know, as a company, we have an incredible amount of funding uh, available from our first, you know, uh, investor and our founder, uh, Jed McCaleb. But if you look at, you know, that money to get to that vision of an artificial gravity space station built on seven Starship module, you can see it on the right, the stick, it's 105 meter long, but seven meter diameter, it rotate at four RPM and create one G on either end, you know, it will take a lot more money than we have uh, to get there. So what we need is to have stepping stones, right? You need a roadmap and, and you need to, to get there. If you look at the space station market, uh, you know, we are, we are a company, a business, you mentioned commercial, um, um, you know, the, right now all space station project and all space station that exists are government, you know, uh, government programs, the ISS obviously with Europe, Japan, Canada, and, and, and the US, um, and now the, the Chinese space station, um, and obviously the historical uh, Russian uh, space station, you know, they all are government expensive uh, government programs. And so, you know, our, our bet, and obviously, is that, you know, we, there is, it is not a time to have a, a commercial space station, you know, one that is anchor customer from governments, uh, in, in NASA specifically, uh, but also is working with industry and private individual, uh, whether on, on flights or, or on payload and, and in space manufacturing. And so at VAST, we, we look back at this decade um, based on the funding we had. And, and uh, you know, as you might have mentioned, uh, there is a, an incredible opportunity in this market or this new market, which is the retirement of the ISIS in, um, in 2030. And uh, the procurement that NASA has going called Commercial Air Destination, NASA CLD, uh, where in 2026, mid 2026, NASA will pick um, a partner or two, we don't know, uh, to basically build the successor to the ISS. Um, and obviously, just like the commercial uh, crew program that created Dragon and Starliner, um, in the past, you know, if you look at crew vehicle, NASA owned the asset and designed them on the cost plus contract for, for example, the space shuttle and, and uh, Saturn V and, and so on. Um, but now with Dragon, they've had an amazing success in uh, creating a commercial uh, transportation layer by not owning the Dragons or the Starliners and paying uh, per seat per flight. Um, and obviously, they helped certify the, the, the vehicle, they've helped develop it, uh, but they didn't pay for the full development and they certainly don't own it. And they have a guaranteed uh, price per, per seat, which is you know, orders of magnitude lower than, the, or at least one order of magnitude, and probably more than, than the shuttle. Um, mm-hmm. So NASA wants to do the same for space station. Right now, the space station is owned, you know, built and owned by NASA and its, and its partner. And they want to recreate what they did with Dragon for space station. So it means uh, being a customer of it, paying per day on the station, per trip, uh, per payload power, per um, facility, per dedicated rack. Um, and this is an incredible opportunity for, for the company's bidding um, to, to basically uh, have an anchor customer of NASA and, and then be able to find other customers uh, and generate more, more revenue. So this is this decade, vast, you know, number one objective is to win this competition, mm-hmm. the NASA CLD. And, you know, as you 
seen on the website, uh, we have a program before that. Uh, so the NASA space station of VAS will be called uh, probably Haven 2. Um, but we basically looked at it and we said, this was about a year and a half ago, this was between February and May last year, you know, how are we going to win this? We actually were not even selected on the first phase of it because we didn't exist. And so NASA picked a, a few of our competitors um, about you know, four years ago or so. They picked Northrop Grumman that now uh, retired. They picked Axiom Space. Um, they picked uh, uh, Nanorack that became Voyager, that became Starlab, so now, now, now it's a Starlab. And they picked Orbital Reef, which is a partnership between uh, Blue Origin and, and Sierra Space. Um, and so they gave each of these companies roughly $160 million to design a paper space station, right? do maybe a bit of hardware with a window and so on, but not, none of them are expected to fly um, a space station as part of the phase one and demonstrate that they can be a space station company. And so last year we realized, oh, we're late. NASA doesn't even know who we are. Um, what could we do to make sure we win? And that's when Haven One came about. And mm -hmm. the answer was, we should build a space station. We should, you know, launch it on a Falcon 9 to orbit. Um, should make sure it's safe and check it out. And then we should send a crew of four um, to to go and visit it for at least two weeks and come back home uh, safely. And our view is that if we are able to do all of that before uh, NASA and obviously the Congress, Senate, White House, uh, international partner have to decide on who should be the, the partner for the international, the new, the successor to the International Space Station, our view is that if we do all of that and we do it safely, which is number one, obviously, and we do it by mid-26, um, it will be very difficult for our competitors uh, to win or us not to win. And so in May last year, we, we announced he, he just, one, and just, that's what we're doing. He just said it's field of dreams. Vast is field of dreams, Rod. If, if they build it, they, they will come. come, right? No, that's <laughs> what it is. You know, I was going to ask, Max, why you thought now was the time for a commercial space station like, like Vast and, and the others there. But you kind of really laid the argument out there for us. As you said, actually, in the beginning, 2017 is much different to start a company than it was in 2002. There's a much more openness and much more demonstration like you're talking about there. And you mentioned Haven One, and that's like kind of the next question I want to talk about because now we know what, what you and what Vast are trying to do. But Haven One, I mean, it's been just over a year, May 2023, I think that uh, Vast announced the Haven One and the Vast One mission, uh, which would be that, that first module. Uh, and I guess you would fly up there with SpaceX. Is that correct? And I'm just curious if you can walk us through like what Haven One will be like to prove out some of the fundamental concepts that, um, that you want to make sure that you cement down as you build up to bigger and bigger uh, space stations. So, you know, if you look back at our goal to win the CLD program, Haven One's sole purpose is to turn us into an actual space station company. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone can say they are a space station company unless they have a space station on orbit and a crew has visited and come back home uh, safely. So that's the purpose of it. The scope was actually, you know, if you look at how we designed Haven One, we started with, with this goal, right? We need to become a space station company and we need to do it before mid-2026. Um, we decided on priorities and requirements. Number one, safety, right? It's obvious that um, the government and, and no one would want to be involved or work with a, a space station that, that is not safe or uh, has had incident. Um, number two is the timeline, um, not the features of the space station. Like We need this to happen before the government uh, makes its selection because that's the biggest opportunity pro, you know, in the world uh, for to find an anchor customer. It's NASA is the biggest customer you can have and is your foundation to then build build upon uh, there. And then we started designing the actual space station and, and we felt you know the we, we shouldn't really uh, design a space station, especially a single module space station without the visiting vehicle mm -hmm. uh, partner uh, being part of our weekly meeting and the design reviews and so on. There are many things from uh, MMOD shielding to making sure we design it so that the nose cone of Dragon doesn't interfere with the uh, with, with the space station, you know, keep out zone and uh, the life support system and how it interacts between the Heaven One, you know, the airflow and, and uh, attitude control. I mean, it's it's endless, the amount of uh, interaction between the two systems, especially, you know, if you're at ISS scale and Dragon is very small, it's one type of interaction. But in our case, you know, we kind of, a little bit bigger, but we are sort of equal, even close to equal on mass. Um, yeah. So we we then went, you know, 
you know, A, we have a, a very aligned culture and we love SpaceX and, and we have, you know, the same long-term mission, right? Make, make life multi-planetary. But on a more practical sense, the, the only uh, working visiting vehicle or spacecraft you can, human spacecraft you can uh, work with um, for a US company is <laughs> the Dragon, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we went to them in, um, you know, this was in April, uh, March, April after we decided. And we started to design the mission together. You know, originally we wanted even one to be uh, even a lot simpler uh, more like a you know a, a second stage of a rocket with not much inside, and we would prove docking, and the crew would just go maybe with an IV or EVA suit. We'd, we'd just go there for an hour or two and come back home. Mm -hmm. And you know, as we started talking with with SpaceX, you know, they, we started to realize, hey, you're going to make all this investment. Why don't you focus on um, something different where you can really extend the amount of time uh, people <clears throat> that buy a Dragon flight can stay in space, right? Right now, SpaceX can offer a flight uh, to the ISS, to the PAM mission, um, but these are limited to, you know, let's say one a year. And then they also offer free flyers, as you know, Inspiration4, Polaris Dawn, um, which we're really excited uh, for that mission in the next few days, hopefully. Hopefully, um, yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you saw, there's another mission um, uh, with a, a, a leader called Chan that uh, is going to right. polar orbit that has been uh, announced. Um, Ram 2 this year, too. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yes, that's I mean, that's coming so so quickly. I think it might be early next year, but uh, yeah, maybe this year. You're right. Um, so we... Um, you know, we uh, we you know we basically realized that hey, if Heaven One existed, and it was equipped with life support and space and you know sleeping berth and so on, um, people could instead of going two or three days in space, which is that's what the free flyers are limited to, they could dock to Heaven One and stay for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And two weeks will give you you know the space sickness actually happens for the first two or three days. Uh, so two weeks is really important. It's a really important milestone uh, so that you can get comfortable and you can enjoy your time uh, there. Um, and also you can have more space. You know, it's about four or five times more volume than you would have on a, on a free flyer. Um, and you have other features. We have uh, Starlink internet. We have payloads. We have uh, a large window. We have sleeping berths. Um, and so together we sort of felt, hey, if you're going to do something vast, you know, um, you should try to do a space station that... Dragon can dock to and people can stay for two weeks. And so that became the next requirement where we started to design within, you know, safety timeline and this. And we, we looked at how much consumables can we pack into Haven 1. Haven 1 is not closed loop ECLIS. That takes a much longer development cycle. So ECLIS meaning life support system. Yeah. Um, it's an open loop one, meaning you have CO2 scrubbing cartridge you have to replace and that don't recycle. The water is not recycled. The trash is not recycled. Um, and so Haven 1 was designed actually as a disposable space station. It will be on orbit for three years. And during that time, we can have 40 days for four crew. So in our, in our plans, the first expedition uh, will be three months after its launch. And then during the three years, we hope to have uh, another three expedition of two, of, two, of two weeks. So that's how it came about. And we signed a, a deal with SpaceX that, um, uh, you know, it provide the first crewed flight. So we are on a full contract for the first uh, Dragon mission. Also to launch Heaven One on a reusable Falcon 9, um, and uh, that's also public. At the announcement we did with SpaceX, we have a, an option for the second uh, expedition. Oh, nice! Um, and then since then, we we furthered the relationship. Uh, we also announced that we will be the first uh, space station, or maybe the first customer, but definitely the first space station to have Starlink laser connectivity. So we are installing Starlink cr created laser terminal on Heaven One that communicate with Starlink satellite and provide the crew over Wi-Fi or over the control system, um, you know, one gigabit two-way connectivity um, uh, at very low latency, something that's very unprecedented from uh, anything uh, on the ISIS and I think something that they will experiment with on Polaris Dawn. So we, we're watching eagerly uh, how <laughs> that will work. So, that means uh, your VAST two, uh, one crew can watch the VAST 2 launch in live stream in real time, right? So, uh, I mean, it <laughs> if means they're that there if, the same time. you know, if, the, if our, uh, our customers have device, you know, Android, iPhone, whatever, but uh, they will be able to, you know, do FaceTime or Zoom and you know, it, it's actually less latency than than um, than Starlink on Earth. We have to yeah. go up, down, up, down, mm. <laughs> and, and we actually have half the half the distance. I don't know how it will convert in latency, but uh, it will be it will be really incredible. And and that's another aspect of uh, 
of uh, you know getting closer in in and working closely with uh, with SpaceX or you know or you know the partner you know our roadmap requires Starship our access to our space station requires Dragon and um, and so this is our long term partner we we look forward to 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 keep working with. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.